Noria Mabasa, Biography Noria Mabasa was born in 1938 in Tsigalo, Venda. Today she lives and works in Vuani, Venda. She has been a full-time artist since 1976, receiving her inspiration for her clay and wood works from dreams. She is the only Venda woman who sculpts in wood. Noria's works deal with traditional issues especially those pertaining to woman. She also draws from her surroundings and outside experience. Dreams and Ancestors by Stephanie Donoa The wall surrounding Noria Mabas's house is a structure of red stained mud with several clay figures emerging out of it. The gate is flanked by two life-sized women dressed in traditional clothing looking into a dung-covered courtyard. There is a traditional hut that is used as a bed and breakfast facility, a small gallery and western-style house where Noria lives. Noria is the only Vanda woman that produces wood sculptures. Her education as an artist is mythical, as she has received her tuition from the realms of her dreams. This all started in 1965. In Noria's own words, I started because of a dream. It took a very long time, because I didn't understand it well. This old lady was teaching me, through dreams about things that didn't seem very important until I started learning about it. This was in 1965 and in 1974, I started the work. Working mainly in clay, Noria found recognition within the national and international art scene in the 1980s with pottery figures painted with enamel paint. Nowadays her clay work combines the figurative and the functional in a more earthy way, pots in the shape of the female body or characterized faces strongly showing the command she has over the medium. Wood carving started in 1976 inspired by her dreams, an ongoing experience that stretches beyond the psychology of the subconscious into the spiritual, the ancestral. Ancestry plays an important part in Noria's tribal heritage. The ancestors are said to be people close to the individual. They put matters in front of God, much in the same way as a Catholic would go to a priest and tell him something and the priest will pray to God. They are a bridge, a go-between. We trust in the ancestors, because we know that when we live, it is the spirit of God that lives. We are the meat made from this earth. The ancestors bring us close to God. From her dreams, Noria draws her power to create. From here she gets the physical strength that has allowed her to produce art for the past 25 years. Her courage to follow her spirit has led her to being both accepted and acclaimed as a woman carver in an art form that traditionally belongs to men. She is a woman of high degree within her community and has been supported by fellow artists such as Nelson Makuba, 1925-1987, who, at the advent of Noria's carving career said, I want to go and show you Noria. That woman is carving. It's the first time a woman is carving here. I want to show everybody. The Gift by Pat Hopkins. Unusual dreams and visions in which ancestors, strangers or animals from the spirit world appear with messages, prophecies or warnings, is one of the ways in which traditional healers and community leaders are called to fulfill their destiny in African society. In 1952, the 14-year-old Noria Mabasa was sent from her home in Tsigalo in Venda to care for her niece in Johannesburg, because her sister-in-law had become blind during childbirth. It was here that she remembers the first dreams that would become such an influence on her life and art. In it her father told her that when the stars came out that evening she was to bring water to his grave in Jaani. She refused because he was dead but the vision kept returning until she approached her brother who felt that the expense of sending her home to Venda at the behest of a dream was unwarranted. Ma Basa, three years later, married and went to live with her husband's family in Jaani. There she began to regularly receive messages, prophecies and warnings through dreams. In one she received an accurate augury that the healthier of the twins of her neighbor would die. In another she was not only able to tell an acquaintance that a letter was being sent to her by a loved one, but also the color paper it was written on. She did not, then, regard these powers as talent, rather it was an immense burden on a young wife with two small children and her mental and physical health began to suffer. In fact, 
Her disorder became so severe that her husband disowned her and sent her back to her family. It was only the beginning of her nightmare. Soon after her return home she began to experience a recurring dream in which an old woman leper with no nose and missing fingers would offer to show her how to work with clay. I was afraid of what people would say so I sent her away said the tiny Mabasa in a gentle voice. But she would not go and continued to haunt me for nine years. After each dream she experienced pain so severe that she was forced to seek medical attention, only to be told there was nothing wrong with her. And the more she rejected the old woman, so her dreams became more extreme and she became sicker. After a particularly vivid dream, in which she was the sun and all the stars fell out of the sky, she had a vision of standing shoulder deep in a river where her father came to her and beat her across the back with a reed for not accepting the gift offered to her. For a few days after she stayed in her hut, refusing all food and water until she was so weak she could hardly walk. Then her father again appeared and told her to stand up, heal herself and accept the offer made to her by the old woman. I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and immediately went to see my father's first wife and explained the dream to her, recalled Mabasa. When the sun rose she helped me undergo a healing ritual that made me feel better and the first thing I did when I got home was to tell my children to got and fetch me some clay from the river. As she worked the clay into little dolls she began to feel a load being lifted from her shoulders and immediately began to regain her strength. When she was happy with the first few she asked her daughter Joyce to take them to the roadside to sell to tourists, but Joyce refused, asking who on earth would buy what her mother had made. Mabasa then bribed her daughter with R1, 1 rand, to go and sell the dolls and she returned with R20, 20 rand. Profit. That day was the first time Mabasa was able to feed her family with money she had earned. As she perfected the making of small dolls, so the leper returned in a dream to show her how to make and fire bigger and more intricate pieces. Shortly after, the niece she cared for in Johannesburg came to visit and Mabasa gave her one of her work as a gift. When the girl returned to the city she showed it to her father who was so impressed he took it into the Soweton newspaper offices where he worked and they ran an article on the artist. Suddenly there was light in my life, smiled Mabasa as art dealers began to beat a path to her door. As I was able to fulfill my mission to get messages from the ancestors to my people. With the money that began to trickle in she invested in property on the banks of the Levabu River where it flows trough Vuani and began to build a house. Her home, consisting of traditional rendezvous and a western-style house with metal frame windows that reflect the mix of customary and modern aspects in her work, is like no other in the community. These structures all lead onto a central courtyard surrounded by a red stained wall that includes a built-in throne in the center. Alongside it are clay maidens depicting the respect the youth used to have for the bodies and the lack of morality in modern society. Sacred crocodiles lie in the shade, a dog slinks over the wall and eyes on stalks keep watch. In the beautiful gardens are potholders in the form of the lower half of the female torso, guard dogs. A woman suckling her child, sheep, a crocodile devouring a man and a variety of complex, hypnotic figures that blend people, animals, mythology and the unconscious. But clay is limited to the size of the available kiln, in Mabasa's case a hole in the ground. One night in 1981 she dreamt of a tree being washed down the river. When she woke she was confused as to why her spirit guide had directed her to clay but was now suggesting wood. Then she realized that wood would free her in terms of scale and she went to the river where she is convinced she saw a piece of driftwood caught under the bridge. She called to a group of women washing clothes on the river bank to help her, but when they responded the wood was gone. Undeterred, she returned home, called her daughter and found an axe. When she got back to the bridge the driftwood she had imagined earlier was there and she cut a section from it and began sculpting with the axe. As dusk descended she dragged the piece home and left it in the courtyard to complete work she was doing in clay, but the wood kept calling out to her and she was forced to leave the pots and finish the sculpture. This sculpture attracted the attention of fellow artist Nelson Makuba who contacted Ricky Burnett who was curating an exhibition. I want to go and show you Noria, exclaimed an excited Makuba. That woman is carving here. I want to show everybody. Suddenly galleries, television and press were all over her, 
often with disastrous consequences. One leading Johannesburg art dealer took a truckload of her work and refused to pay her for what was sold or return anything until she was forced to consult an attorney. Even then only a fraction of the unsold sculptures found their way back to her. I decided to leave it, shrugged Mabasa as she ran her hand through her long dreadlocks that give her strength. It was consuming too much energy and I could always make other stuff. But it did teach me to be more careful. She needed all the strength and energy she could muster for another gift. A massive tree washed down the river during the flood that devastated southern Africa in 1999. From that she cut five pieces including one for a work in honor of the woman who gave birth in a tree in Mozambique. Another of two men holding up a ceremonial drum and the biggest of them all, her rendition of the union buildings that she considers her best piece ever, which she is currently completing in her garden. This massive sculpture, of a woman chasing a man while others beat drums and jubilantly face the sky, celebrates the struggle of women for emancipation from oppression. It is now the time for women to be liberated, she commented. It is silly that they have still have to stand back for men because everyone is equal number that is wrong women are better than men